What does James think will be the impact of the lockdown on the housing market in the long term? Does this threaten the asset price inflation model? It could do. There's, I've been trying to think about some of this because because you're not. This isn't the first time I've been asked. Uh, there's clearly like people out there worried about their their, their houses. Presumably, um, it, it's a bit it's a bit early to say. I think there's there's a, there's a possibility that the housing market is one of the bits of the economy that recovers the most rapidly out of all this. Because if you have a pause on mortgage payments and perhaps some vague, not particularly serious or meaningful restrictions on evictions, that sort of thing, that you unwind rapidly, things could in theory recover. Uh, I think the longer term bit and, and the potential here is to think about the balance of, of kind of assets versus labor over a very long period of time. And, and historically, at least pandemics tend to lead to the, the balance of the economy shifting more in favor of labor than in favor of, of wealth. And so you might anticipate that the asset price inflation model that Teddy Ruxpin here uh, is talking about starts to look a little bit um, battered or a little bit shifted as a result of that, that there is a shift in favor of labor in one form or another. And that, that's certainly a possibility out of, this, out of this. That doesn't mean we all get suddenly a, a social democratic Shangri-La with uh, loads of really strong trade unions. I mean, one option is that you have many more controls placed on labour to sort of deal with its potential strength. So you have much more monitoring at work, much more surveillance, much more intensive use of, of a sort of data economy to make that happen. But at least potentially, the entire kind of shift towards capital assets that we've seen over the last uh, 40 years or so in terms of where the returns are being produced, who does best out of the balance of economic activity, that might, there is a case for saying this will shift, start to shift back towards Labour as a result of this crisis. Although I suppose one reason why historically pandemics have often led to uh, an increase in the balance of power of Labour is because so many people of working age die. That was part of the reason why wages rose after the plague, wasn't it? So so we'll be looking for a different mechanism than that. Historically, yes. I mean, the, and, this time around, potentially, if you want to, if you, look, if you're basically saying to people, we're going to have to restrict the labour market to deal with the fact that there's a pandemic risk, then what you're actually doing is is reducing the supply of labour, and that potentially puts more power back in the hands of labour itself, right? So you don't have to have this impact of the Black Death in Europe. You can have something different that, that plays out this time around, and that to me seems at least a plausible possibility, looking some distance ahead out of this crisis. Aaron, any final points? Yeah, it's a really interesting one about about the housing market. I think, I mean, the whole housing market is it's it's going into deep freeze, which is just, uh, I mean, James knows better again than I. I, I. I don't think in peacetime this has ever happened before. Just to suspend, you know, the housing market. Um, on the one hand, there'll be no new supply because obviously how new houses aren't being built, but people are still having children. People, you know, there's still a, a large population here. So if if house building doesn't get to the previous, although it was incredibly low before. If it doesn't get to the previous rate of construction for another year, 18 months, that could create bottlenecks. So prices would actually go up. At the same time, you might have large numbers of asset holders, people who own homes outright, pass away. We, again, we don't know how bad this would get. Mm. That would increase the supply. Um, I, I suspect the big crisis would be if we start to get lots of debt defaults and mortgages. That, that, that would be the thing that triggers a devaluation in the housing market. Uh, and of course, the government's taking extraordinary steps to make sure that doesn't happen. So in, in the absence of that, I, I don't think we would see something like happens in Nevada or California in 2008. Uh, I think it will more or less, it might, you know, what we forget is actually since 2016, house prices in this country, but particularly London, have basically stagnated. Uh, rents have actually slightly gone down. So we may just see the same as that, a bit more noticeable for the next four, five, six years. You know, we shouldn't always be accustomed to this or, you know, uh, up, down, peaks, troughs. It might just be slightly dull and a slight downturn.